Yeah, parts. Yeah, I need a new engine fan for an A230 combine. Yeah. I feel terrible. It wasn't my fault, but the combine is down and uh, I killed something. So when I went to start the combine up, it's been sitting for a couple days since it rained. And I turned it on and the combine shook and vibrated violently for a second. And I thought the rotor was on. I'm like, how is the rotor running when I just start up? And then it quit, the vi but the combine still was vibrating a little bit, but I was like, well, that is weird. Well, I'm just gonna back it up to the fuel tank here and put fuel in it and then I'll climb up back here and take a look So I drove it over and backed it up and I got up here and I'm filling up with diesel and I reach down and I see a weird chunk of something and I pick it up and It's uh, meat bloody And then it dawned on me And I took a peek under here And a stray cat decided it'd be a great place to lay in the fan compartment right up against the radiator and it destroyed the cat and the fan. Just, it's a mess under there. So we got a guy, Chadster is gonna go get a fan. There's one at the dealership. So he's gonna go get a fan. I don't even know what that thing costs, but it's probably a lot. Leg arms and I are gonna start peeling us apart and figure out how we're gonna put a fan in here. This is the first time, I've always heard of this happening. This is the first time I've ever had this happen. I, I hear of that happening, Kid, cats getting under the hoods. A lot of the older vehicles, because they were belt driven fans. This is a belt driven fan. The newer cars doesn't happen as much because they're electric fans and the engine will run before the fan kicks on so the cat gets out. Well, this cat had no chance. All right, well, let's uh, pull this thing apart and see what we find. This yeah. whole cover, looks like it, this cover's it's welded together off. down there. You just take off these bolts, I believe. <sighs> we're like this close to being done with harvest. Wow, there's like goo all over. I know, it's a mess. Here we go. See the damage? The radiator needs to be washed out. Yeah, that radiator's pretty dirty. We're just gonna hopefully make it to the end of season. Oh, there's chunks down there too, all along the bottom. I think it'll buff out. We could probably just put some wax on it and shine it up. It'll be good. Uh, leg arms, are you sure you're gonna be able to carry that down the ladder okay? Right. That's kind of dangerous. I wouldn't, not oh! Okay. Chad is back with the fan. Wonder how much this baby costs. Is that the invoice? Uh, I don't think what do you guys think it cost? No way. That. that can't be right. What? It's only 300 bucks. What? I thought for sure that was gonna be a thousand dollar fan. Wow. Okay. Well, let's get it in there and get going. Okay. Back in business. Let's go get some chickpeas. No grinding sounds, we're good. All right, let's roll. All right, well there, finished that piece. There wasn't a lot of acres there. So now we're down Wiggles has left the farm. So Wiggles took off, he's got some hunting to do. He's a big hunter and that's what's the joy about him is uh, he's here and we need him and when we don't, he's gone. It's so slow with these chickpeas, we don't need him. Dad's taking off to the next field. I'm gonna go grab the Defender over here. Let's run out to the quad track, which we just got parked there because it's so slow to fill the thing. It's not really worth having anyone man it. And I'm gonna go dump that in the International, which is sitting on top of an auger ready to load in the grain bin. I'll get a reading on how many pounds came off that field and then uh, go to the next field. Wanna come with me? Don't worry. I won't start the engine unless I check the engine fan. Chad's not here to drive it. It's all mine. Okay, everyone. Um, second day to the last. One more day of harvest. Uh, and then we're done for 2020. We're cutting 
chickpeas, gabonzo beans, garbs, whatever you want to call it, they're all the same. Uh, with me, I have my daughter and Hi. my grandchildren. Hi. At least three of them out of the nine. Um, so anyway, so I'll, let's go ahead and say what's your name? You're Addie. the oldest? Addie. Addie? No, this one. Okay, Andrew? Is that you? Yep. Oh, uh, okay. I was wondering who was behind me. And then who are you? Nora. All right. And then where's your mother? Mary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yeah, they're enjoying uh, the combine ride, harvesting. And uh, it's quite an experience for them. Always a highlight. Yep. It's always fun to see all this, all the moving parts happening. The, the amount of plant material coming in and then exiting out the back um, and then what's happening in the grain tank um, oh, so it's goodness. a it's quite an experience um, and then just the field and the uh, being out in the the land and the, the view the skies are a beautiful day probably about 68 and 70 well no it's probably about 75 76 out there yeah. no, no wind, wind really sunny uh, not very smoky just a great great day uh, great fall day love fall day so yeah. anyway uh, what do you guys want to say you guys want to uh, keep cutting or do you want to go to, go to the pool uh, <laughs> oh no the pool's too cold keep yeah the pool's a little cold Cutting's the pool's way more cold fun. okay all right hold it <laughs> yes we all love the horn all right I'm gonna let you guys go uh, Cause I gotta hold on to them, make sure everything stays <laughs> right. good. So say goodbye. I know you guys have heard me speak really highly of this setup here, but I'm being honest when I say it is a really nice setup. Case IH did a great job, and uh, kudos to them. Honestly, this is this is very well done. You never know really how much you're gonna like a system until you get some time on it, but. So far, I've been very impressed with this, and I'm really curious to see when these tractors get out there more and more with the Magnum, the Connect Magnums and everything, what people think if they really do like it. But I personally think this was a home run. I really do. So, good job, Case. Looks like 55,100 pounds, 13% moisture, and 918 bushels. I'll log that. On to the next field. All right, let's go join Dad. I'll leave the quad here. He said it's not yielding very good. It's the very... Pretty much the very last stuff we planted of the chickpeas and it's weedy and a mess. So we'll be able to hold, it's really small. Just like, I don't know, 20 acres or something. So we'll be able to hold it all in these combines. So I'll just run this down there, cut it with the combines, come back, figure out what we're gonna do. And uh, yeah, go from there, but ah, uh, just too bad it's not yielding better. That's such a bummer. And just like that, we went from a pretty clean field to kosher again, lots of it. Oh, it's actually running, what is that, 15, 14? So it's gonna be teens. We might get 13 on this, I don't know. Dad said in the real thick weeds, it's not yielding very much at all. I don't know, we're learning. This is, I guess, the life of a pulse crop. Peas aren't that bad though. Yellow peas aren't bad. Chickpeas on the other hand, such a late crop. Weeds get a chance to grow, just tough. Oh no, well, let's do it. Get ready, beast bind. You're gonna eat some weeds. Nom, 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 nom. Oh, wow. Yeah. That'll clean bee spine out. It's like uh, drinking a bottle of prune juice. I mean, it's more like fiber, eating a bunch of carrots. But we're getting one bushel an acre, too, in that spot. Actually, this area right here and some of this other area over here where there wasn't any weeds, it was running 25. So it's amazing. Changes. Well, it's kind of an interesting situation today. I'm uh, not driving the combine, but a Raptor pilot is. This is Lance. Lance, you're from Alaska. Yep. And what do you do for a living again? I was an F-22 pilot. Yeah, just an F-22. If you guys saw on some of the social media, Lance actually flew a flag in an F-22 for me and some other guy, but we won't talk about him. <laughs> but no, Lance is passing through and uh, he is a farm boy at heart. You grew up in Nebraska, right? Yeah. So this is not unnatural for you to be driving a combine, except for the fact that it's a red combine. Yeah, I don't know how you do this. 
he's figured it out. He's okay. He'll make it. But he's a, he, he's a green guy. But but um yeah, he's from a farm in Nebraska, so he's a farm boy at, farm boy at heart, and uh, turned fighter pilot, kind of like my alter what uh, life that I wanted. <laughs> I was a farm boy, wanted to be fighter pilot, didn't go that way. He became the fighter pilot. So but uh yeah, so but it's good to get back in the combine. Oh, it's so great to get back. In the so what's harder to do, a combine or a or a, or an F twenty two? A combine, hundred percent. 100%. 100% yeah. he, he makes it sound like an F-22 is the easiest job in the world. All right, I, I should probably not say anything. He's dumping on the go. We don't want him to mess up here. Big money, yep, easy. Oh, he's done this before. See, he can refuel at that, what, 30, 40,000 feet? What, what do you refuel at? What else do you do? About 30,000 feet. 30, he can refuel at 30,000 feet at night. Okay, with, driving a green car is exactly like getting an aerial refuel. It's 100% exactly the same thing. But we don't if have the can, cool lights that like line you up. Yeah, but stuff. if you can unload on the go, you can, you can get dude here. <laughs> See, same thing. Why are we all fire pilots? If this is this easy, what am I doing here? <laughs> yeah, well, but but on the downside though, when uh, it's time to go to the bathroom, you can't climb out. You can't. Of, no, you yeah. are strapped to a rocket motor. Yeah, you're not. You're not stepping out. Yeah, you're not stepping you need to stretch your legs. You're not stepping out. You can't do that. <laughs> that's that's pretty cool. So, have you strafed any combines on the field yet? I haven't yet. No. Oh. It's on the bucket list. Oh, that'd be great. I would get. I would love. It. If there's a fighter pilot out there right now, or anybody that wants to strafe or call me, I would totally be okay with that. So feel free. Big, heavy, I don't mind. It'd be awesome. Makes my day a little brighter. <laughs> but, well, that's cool to have you here. We've been talking pilot stuff for a while now. It's been awesome having Lance on site. He's uh, bringing a cool perspective uh, from the actual guys in the seats. You know, we sit there and watch him fly and actually talk to a person. Just like he's learning about how difficult of a life a YouTuber is. Oh, it's so hard. Yeah, we're a bunch of crybabies. You just whine, you know, whine about this and that. So he's he's getting a taste of it. And you guys thought I was joking about the fighter pilot driving the tractor thing. Now we got him in the quad now, but he had the helmet up for that. <laughs> <laughs> that is so odd. I want that helmet. So he's gonna dump us. We're not gonna spill any chickpeas on the ground. Not like you did. He's refueled at thirty some thousand feet at like I don't know two hundred knots. What do you feel at? What speed do you feel at? Three something? Uh, just 300, yeah. 300 knots? So this should be easy for him, right? Him no up. pressure. Every chick he counts, Dusty. 100%, 100%. Lance's call sign is Dusty. Is that is that public knowledge? Can we say that? Yeah, you can say that. Okay, Dusty. We're calling him Dusty from now on because he's creating quite a dusty mess over, dusty here. over here. Yeah, look at that. The real question is though, does the millennial farmer prove? Or is that the actor who plays the Millennial Farmer? I'm not sure which one it is. He, he's shaking his head left to right, so I don't think he does. I don't know what his problem is. He'd like this tractor if he had a chance to run it. He's a pro. I've said a lot of bad things about fighter pilots, but he defeats the narrative. This guy's this guy's the real deal. No, he's still pretty upset about the color of this machine. I know. <laughs> if only it was green. It'd be but I just, I just don't know what his problem is because, I mean, that's his red truck over there. He likes his... His equipment green and his truck's red, right? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> what do you think, Zach? No? Yeah, I didn't think so. Can you do it without the helmet? That's the question. <laughs> it's nice with auto steer. You don't have to sit here. Yeah, auto steer is a dream come true. Some of you are probably wondering what that sound is. Uh, that constant drop, 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 drop. I'm standing next to a a natural gas compressor plant. Um, this, where we are on our farm, is an old, old gas field, natural gas field. And uh, it's to the point now where they're just sucking the last of the gas out of the, out of the ground. They actually create a negative pressure in the, uh, in the pipeline or in the wellhead to try to suck the gas out of the formation. Probably going to be in a few years be about be done with uh, with the gas uh, that uh, they can get. Uh, there could be some deeper. I think there is some deeper, but wh whether it's economically feasible right now to do it. Um, underneath this also is a layer of hydrocarbon material. Um, they tried to frack oil bearing material. Uh, there is oil, it's kind of like a mini Vulcan, but the only problem with it is that it's too shallow. It's probably around, I'd say maybe 3,000 feet, and it just, I guess, is not enough pressure to have cooked the rock 
enough to so that when they go in and open up the pores in fracking that the material will flow uh, when crude finally gets back up there again they'll probably develop a technique to be able to go down and and frack and and uh, get that layer of um, of uh, oil bearing material get the oil out of it but right now um, it's not going to happen for at least probably in my lifetime uh, what a bummer he could stay forever guys i know i was having so much fun with him that's pretty cool though right i know dust you're gonna watch this video later but uh it was fun having you run and uh you know what this quad track just got a lot more valuable because it's had a raptor pilot fly it yes raptor pilots are awesome because dusty's awesome so believe it for those of you who may be wondering the f-22 raptor is one of the greatest fighter jets ever built it's the fifth generation fighter that the u.s air force has been flying for a number of years now there's only 186 of them 180 some of them out there they didn't make very many and there's only a few pilots that get a chance to fly them so it's a pretty prestigious job it's a pretty cool airplane it really is amazing so yeah that's a that's an honor to be able to fly something like that but it's also an honor to be able to drive something like this right yeah he was pretty impressed you guys saw in his face through his visor he was impressed you're not gonna believe it guys we are within like 150 acres of being done with harvest 2020. just finished second to last field we're going to the next one right now i'm in the quad it's awesome it's fun to be back in this thing i'm kind of missing my fighter pilot buddy but you know what that's okay someday we'll we'll meet up again in a field with some tractors that's what we do but until then let's finish harvest 2020 i'm ready to go let's get this done equipment strong things are running smooth momentum's moving let's go Well, that's a good note to end the day on. We're gonna finish tomorrow for sure. Got a lot of this done. Dad's gone by and run out of fuel. Our big fuel tank on the farm ran out today. <laughs> so he wasn't able to top off 100%. So we got a fuel truck coming. I think they topped it off while we were out in the field. At least we may add a, little, a couple thousand gallons to it. So we'll have enough to finish tomorrow. But I'm gonna go park this uh, beast of a quad and uh, wait for uh, Chad Steer to finish up with his machine back there. and. Let's go sleep another night and then done with harvest 2020. Ah, I can't wait. I'm so ready to be done. Oh, uh, and I shouldn't be complaining. I know guys that do this for like six months straight. You know who you are. You guys are crazy. Last day of harvest. Got the combines. Just need to put a little bit of fuel in. Um, won't take much. We've got about 120 acres of the chickpeas to uh, take off the ground and and then it's the process of getting them back eventually here we'll clean them up and uh, write down what we need to do and put them away or do some repairs and then we'll probably pull them in in the winter here and uh, go through them but uh, yeah it's been a great harvest really enjoyed running uh, Clifford again beast buying combines ran really flawlessly again this year really no issues except for that uh, nine lives animal that went through the fan uh, but that was a very cheap fix I was surprised uh, a little over $300 for a fan oh that's amazing all right Chad's gonna finish it up I need to get on the machine and we'll uh, garb the garbs last day with the quad it's been really fun 
So we've been spoiled. I'll be the first to admit that. Been a good machine. 2096 cart. Great cart. So we'll, so we'll finish this out. Put this guy to use one last time. Top the fuel off, wash it off, clean it up, get it ready to go so when they come to pick it up, they can take it to someone else's farm and they can have a riot with it. But it's been good, been very happy. Good machine. All right, let's go. Somebody's been eating the greens. Look at that thing. Look at all that white stuff down there. It looks like snow, alkaline. Alkaline, salt, all kinds of nasty stuff that uh, does not grow crops. And uh, basically the ground is sterile. And there's nothing we can do about it. It's a lost cause. I've talked about this in previous videos, but this area is really bad. And this whole bottom down here is slowly being taken over by alkaline. And it's just, it's not a lot of acres. I mean, what, two or three acres? Well, take that out of what, 10,000 acres? That's not gonna, that's not gonna make that big of a dent in our farm. But it is sad to see land disappear to that. And I remember we used to farm this right here that was not white like that when I was a kid. And it's slowly gotten worse. And I don't know. Farming practices or what may be doing that, but they got a land bridge down here that I built so that way we can get across this bottom down here that combines were getting stuck in before and tractors. So they're driving across that. I'm gonna drive across it in a minute. Get to the other side where there's 80 acres over here. We'll get that knocked out and then finish this side and we're done. Woo! Oh yeah. All right, let's drive across it. I do need to put some kind of drainage on this. I haven't done it yet. We've got some heavy pipe that we were gonna dig a trench and lay it in, so it drains that side out. So when it fills up full of water, it doesn't. Uh, run across and wash this little man-made bridge that we made out. But so far it's been holding up pretty good. So that white alkaline, it's almost like Yellowstone. Looks like Yellowstone ground. And that water I would not drink. Gross. Amazing how the ground just changes color. The salts just work themselves up. But this, a lot of this dirt here, I, I dug from some areas over there that didn't have a lot of salt in it and it still works its way up. But you can see on this side, nasty, yep. And then uh, this side, it's deteriorated some of the bank back. We can rebuild it pretty easy, but I know the waves and the wind. I plowed a lot of rock along here, but it's it's kind of slumped off. So I need to get some more rock, which is a nice pile right there. But it's kind of difficult to get to because you'll get stuck. But put some more rock along here and then dig a trench, drop a big pipe in. So that way there'll be an overflow mark. So when it gets to a certain point, it won't go across the road. It'll actually go underneath. Things to do. We'll get to it someday. Oh, look at that. Those are thousands of millers. We call them millers, but they're little moths. Tons of them. That's some nasty water. Ah, yes, finally, the combine that needs dumped. Oh, I thought it'd never happen. There's nothing like 11 bushel chickpeas to make your day go by really fast. Not complaining. I'm just, yeah, I'm complaining. Okay, I'll stop. Hey, remember when I talked about those things, the pipes in the ground that are sticking out of the field? that they didn't take out from years and years ago when there used to be a gas well there. There's another one right there. Look at that one. And no, I'm not gonna go around the farm and put solar panels on everyone with little LED lights flashing so that we can see them two weeks out of the year. I'll just avoid them. I just won't hit them. But I can complain a little bit. I'm complaining again. Okay, I'll stop. Coming up to the very end, 2020 harvest is now completed. And that's a good feeling. Great having you guys with us. Um, look forward to the fall with a number of events and uh, be exciting. That's it. Harvest 2020 is in the books. Done. Last of the chickpeas right there. No more acres to cut. Let's row this baby home. That's an end of another chapter of the book of what happens on Welker Farms here in North Central Montana. Thanks for joining us, guys. I'm gonna row this back. Let's do a little bit of cleaning, get stuff wrapped up, shut her down, and then start thinking about next year. But don't worry, there's a lot of harvesting going on still all across the country. 
Corn harvest just about to kick off. Some guys are already well into it. It's gonna be good stuff. So there's a lot of content coming, but I hope you guys enjoyed this version of harvest in the world in North Central Montana from Welker Farms. <laughs>